Hello! Been a while since I've done a review, I know. Um, so I went to go see Tusk today, uh, Kevin Smith's new indie horror comedy film. And for those of you who don't know about this movie's origins, Kevin Smith, you know, from Clerks, Small Rats, Dogma, all that stuff, he's gotten a lot into podcasting these past couple of years, and he has a bunch of them. Um, he's got Smod his Smodcast Network. Tusk came about as a result of him and Mosier just talking about a weird human centipede type of <laughs> rambling they had about uh, being turned into a walrus by, like, a mad scientist. They plotted out this entire, like, story of a guy who gets, like, captured and mutilated and turned into, like, this walrus man and who's trained to be a walrus. And he, Kevin Smith left it up to his Twitter followers or from to, to his fans to basically vote yay or nay on this idea as a movie. Either a walrus yes or walrus, walrus no. And obviously walrus yes won out. Because now we have Tusk. Which, <laughs> and I don't mean this as an insult by any means, this is one of the g most gloriously retarded Kevin Smith's films I've ever seen. <laughs> but in a good way. Like, it's enjoyable. It is, actually. It's, it's, it's a horror comedy, not really horror, horrific. The idea is horrific. Like, in the way the human centipede was horrific. In that, like, the grotesqueness of the idea is actually what's driving most of the suspense and the horror than anything else. But what's different, what differs this from human centipede is that this actually delivers on its kind of gross-out moments, <laughs> in a sense. Like, the, the idea of... The Human Centipede, which I've seen the first one and the second one, so second one is definitely far more graphic. The idea in the first movie of the Human Human Centipede, yeah, sure, that that's a pretty gross, grotesque type of idea to have. These three people sewn ass to mouth <laughs> to be a human centipede, but it never really delivered on the shock value of that, or, or at least on the, I don't know what, like, grotesque is the word, like, it never really seemed, even when it happened and they were all together and the whole thing, it wasn't really horrific looking, um, here, <laughs> here, uh, you gotta admire the practical effects and the prosthetics in this movie, it's, it's pretty fucking weird looking, but at no point, does it seem... I mean, it's stupid. It's a stupid idea. But it it's done pretty well. Um, let's talk about the pros here. I mean, Michael Parks... I love the, I love the dude. He, he rocks in this. He's just playing... He's going for over-the-top, zany, Dr. Heiter-ish. Not really Heiter-ish. Like, he's more calm and reserved, like Southern Gentleman type, even though he's Canadian. Um, <laughs> and uh, he's really good in this. I, I like him in this. Just playing this calm, collected, but so eerie type of dude in this who wants to get this project off the ground, I guess. <laughs> who has had this project off the ground several times and has killed several people in his goal of recreating his long-lost walrus friend. <laughs> um, he's good. Justin Long, he's he's pretty good too. I there we'll talk about more of this more, but he doesn't he didn't really gel for me as a character that I sympathize with really so much throughout this movie. He's kind of just a zany Justin Longy type character in this. But it works. It's fine. He's funny at times, you know, he has his funny moments. But when he gets into the walrus suit, <laughs> sorry, spoilers, <laughs> he becomes a human walrus. When he gets into that suit, I kind of lo loved him a little bit more. Um, all, all across the board, the performances are fine. Haley Joel Osment's in it as his uh, buddy and fellow podcaster. Um, the whole story being that, like, Justin Long travels around the country, you know, interviewing weird people, and he and his buddy, you know, he tries to describe these interviews and these meetings to his friend, Haley Joel Osment, and they do a podcast about it, and their podcast is called The Nazi Party, N-O-T-S-E-E -E Party, 
In other words, Haley Joel Osment doesn't see these people. He just gets the descriptions from his friend, Justin Long. Um, so, I mean, that's that's pretty funny. That's a pretty cool, funny idea. And it ties in very much with Kevin Smith's own love of podcasting. So he can talk about that type of stuff. He can talk about that world or, you know, the details involved with that. Um, Genesis Rodriguez as his girlfriend... She's good. She's fine. She has a pretty good monologue and delivers. It's kind of out of nowhere. It really doesn't have anything to do with anything else in the movie, but it's good. She's really good at performing it. Um, okay. Here's where I got to... Here's, here's the one drawback on this film, I feel, is that I enjoy... Kevin Smith's dialogue. I enjoy his writing very much. And he proved to put, he, he, he said it too. He's like, you don't want to hire me for like action films. A thing like when the Green Hornet was still being, people were like, oh, you love the Green Hornet. Why don't you do the Green Hornet movie? He said in like his evening with Kevin Smith, he's like, I, I would be a terrible choice for a Green Hornet movie because all I'd want to do is film Green Hornet and Cato hanging out by the car and just talking and talking about a crime that's taking place off screen. Like, <laughs> He's admitted himself. He's like, he's a dialogue guy. He loves writing, like, clever, like, lines and funny lines for people to say. He loves kind of coloring people's languages, uh, coloring people's language a little bit more. And it's on full display here, and it's done really well, and it's delivered well from people like Michael Parks and even Justin Long, and to some extent. And like, like I said, Genesis Rodriguez has a good uh, monologue in this. And... Everything having to deal with turning man into walrus, that narrative, that's pretty. That's a pretty tight narrative, actually. Like, it is human centipede-ish, except far more uh, rewarding in terms of <laughs> the training of the, <laughs> the walrus dude. But, I mean, it, it delivers on that part. We're kind of... I don't... It does kind of drag at points... Um, when it starts trying to make yucks at Canada's expense, and I'm not saying like, oh, we should make we shouldn't make fun of Canada or anything. It it just seems like a very kind of generic jab at Canada. Like they're so you know, oh, hey, and every everyone's saying a boot and a, and you know, heavy on the accents. Ralph Garman shows up as a as a investigator at one point, but when it when the only part of it where it worked for me was when. Justin Long has, like, a brief exchange with Harley from Epic Mealtime, of all people, as, like, a customs official. And they just have this back and forth about hockey and everything like that. And that actually got a chuckle out of me. But when Guy Lapointe <laughs> shows up... Um, spoilers here. Guy Lapointe, or Guy Lapointe, Guy Lapointe, how you ever want to say it. It's, um... It's Johnny Depp in prosthetic nose, wig of hair, <laughs> doing his Inspector Clouseau for all intents and purposes. That's where it kind of starts to kind of drag a bit. And I know this movie isn't really taking itself seriously at any point, but that's where the comedy for me kind of fell a little bit flat because they're just hamming up this whole, oh, he's from Quebec, blah, and, you know, and I mean, he's good. He does a good job. He's doing far more than what I was expecting him to do in this role. Like, every once in a while when he's talking to, like, Osman or Rodriguez about the, he's been hunting this serial killer who's been skinning his victims and taking out their teeth and whatever, and you know, where the tusks are. He's putting, like, huge holes in the mouth where the tusks should go. And every time he starts talking, his, like, right eye or his, uh, I'm sorry, left eye will trail off to the center a little. <laughs> it, it cracks me up. That cracked me up a little bit. So he, he is honestly, like, delivering far more cheesiness to this character than what you were expecting him to do. It just It, it just didn't work for me overall as like a prolonged thing because the thing is it is very dialogue heavy it is a kevin smith film he does love to kind of you know get into these stories and get into these uh monologues a little bit and just depp's monologues weren't really 
working for me so much. Even when he's got like when even when he flashes back to meeting Michael Parks' character and Michael Parks is playing <laughs> is playing a mental for all intents and purposes, a mentally severely mentally challenged Canadian <laughs> um just hamming it up. Even with these two guys kind of hamming it hamming it up at each other, there were there were parts that were funny, but it just I don't know. It just it, it kind of fell flat, and it it was kind of a huge like, okay, here's a big tangent to somewhere else, and now we're back to the walrus movie. Um, yeah, it just kind of felt like a big what the fuck? What what's what is this movie about all of a sudden? And then we're back to the walrus. But you know what? It, it wasn't enough for me to be like, oh, boohoo on this movie. Like, I'll always, on some level, even something like Mallrats, I like Mallrats. Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, I would say, is kind of the lowest rated um, Kevin Smith film for me, which is weird because years ago, years, years, and years ago, like when it first came out, I really loved it. But then when I saw more of his indie stuff, like Red State, when I saw when I finally did get to see, like, Clerks in all its full glory and stuff like that and got around to finally seeing Mallrats and things like that. Like, I, I still enjoy these movies. Like, even with Jay and Silent Bob being kind of the lowest point of the movies for me, I still enjoy that movie a bit. Like, I'll enjoy Kevin Smith's stuff. I mean, <laughs> it's it's ridiculously silly, but I enjoy it. What killed me in this movie was the walrus suit. It is really good practical and prosthetic effects on Justin Long. But and he really gets into this walrus character and becomes anim more and more animalistic as the movie goes on. But what was cracking me up more than anything else is whenever Michael Parks and him are just kind of chilling in the walrus den or walrus cave. And Michael Parks is, like, there in the water with him, teaching him how to swim. <laughs> I don't know if it's character-wise because Justin Long is, like, heavily drugged or disoriented by his transformation. Or if he's genuinely, like, every once in a while, behind all this walrus makeup and stuff like that, he's looking across at Michael Parks. Every once in a while, you see Justin Long do this, like... <laughs> that was killing me. I couldn't explain why. I, part of me like was like, oh, it's because he's just disoriented and stuff. But another part of me is thinking like, <laughs> he's so like, oh, this fucking guy. Like, the shock of being turned into walrus has finally worn off him, off of him, and now he's just annoyed by it. <laughs> like, it, it just cracked me up. But it was like. Guy, like it, it is entertaining to kind of see him flail around or stumble around in this fucking blubbery suit that's made out of human skin, and, and it's just a vision. It is a visual that will kind of stick with you because it is a really well done practical effect. That it is a really well done suit. I think it looks good. It really does. It looks gross, but not like horrific. Like. It's not going to haunt my nightmares, but it's it's definitely something that... It's an image that will stick in your mind. Um, yeah, I, I, I if you're a Kevin Smith fan, especially if you're a, one of his Smodcast fans, because there's plenty of Smodcast goodies hidden throughout this, the end of the movie, you hear segments of Mosier and Smith talking about this. You hear the genesis of this idea, which is kind of cool. Um, the ringtone, Justin Long's ringtone is the Hollywood helper, uh, jingle for Hollywood Babylon with Ralph Garman doing a Pacino impression. It's like, ooh, -ah, ooh, -ah, ooh, margaritas, ooh, -ah, ooh, -ah. like that's, that's his ringtone. And every time the phone rings in this, I, I just start laughing because I love that impression. I love that jingle. I don't know why. It's, it's just one of those things. If you're a Kevin Smith fan and a Smodcast fan, Especially, you'll love this movie. Um, if you like weird, bizarre horror comedy, you'll probably like it just as much as as anything else. Um, but like I said, just to, maybe just the the Johnny Depp Canadian segments kind of went on a little long, but everything else was fine. Um, give it a give it a watch. Tusk is I'd say it's a, it's a fun enough time. <laughs> and, that <laughs> that image is not going to leave my mind
See ya.